he's alive. John Adams, American composer, born in 1947. Now, this is a composer who wants it all. He wants the rhythmic pleasure and pulse of the American minimalists like Steve Reich and Philip Glass, a slightly earlier generation, but he also wants the sheer harmonic voluptuousness of late romanticism. He even quotes people like Mahler and Wagner because he wants all of that too. He wants that unbelievably rich harmony as well as all the, uh, the rhythmic pulsing pleasure and energy of the minimalists. So it's, it's, a, it's a super rich mix. He was born in the East Coast in 1947, but he's moved to the West Coast where he's made his uh, life and his music. He lives kind of in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm not gonna give you his address, but anyway, there he's dreamt of oil tankers taking flight. He's turned that into music. He's also dreamt of limousines uh, on the freeway turning into Steinway pianos. Now they're playing volleys of, uh, it turns out to be B flat major and E flat major, it doesn't really matter what the keys are. They're having a kind of pianistic battle. And the way that that piece ends up sounding, you get this unbelievable tune. There. So it's music that's really rejoicing in its sheer voluptuous sensuality. John Adams has been absolutely unafraid to court controversy through what he's doing in his operas, through, through, through the subject he chooses. Above all, the death of Klinghoffer, uh, which dramatizes the events of the uh, Achille Lauro and the murder of Leon Klinghoffer. This is a piece that's still controversial in New York. There were supposed to be cinema performances of, of the death of Klinghoffer. They had to be canceled. There's, there's an opera on Dr. Atomic about Robert Oppenheimer and the birth of the bomb. There's a piece written on the transmigration of souls about the victims of 9-11. There's a piece about an earthquake called I was looking at the ceiling and then I saw the sky, which has this irresistible earworm in it. I was looking at the ceiling, I was looking at the ceiling, I was looking at the ceiling, and then I saw the sky. And then I saw the sky. It sounds better than that, but I promise you it gets into your head and doesn't, doesn't go away. The, the other work from around this time, this is all mid-1980s, is his opera Nixon in China. Nixon's visit in the mid-1970s to China is turned into an opera broadcast across America, presented by Walter Cronkite. How about that? You can't say that about too many operas. The point I'm making is that John Adams is putting uh, the contemporary world on stage, he's turning it into myth, and he's unafraid to show the contemporary music has to be, frankly, relevant to people's lives. My three favorite John Adams pieces. First, Shaker Loops for a small string ensemble or string orchestra. Just a completely irresistible combination of kind of chugging minimalist rhythms, but this harmonic sweep and fabulous tunes Second choice, grand pianola music, this surreal dream of a pianistic battle between uh, Rachmaninoff and late romanticism and uh, the minimalist masters like Steve Reich and Philip Glass. And third, his opera Nixon in China, which dares to put uh, contemporary Chinese and American politics on stage. In a way, I've got a bit of a problem with John Adams. This is someone I should probably see a therapist about because it's completely addictive music, this. Whether it's dealing with subjects of the utmost seriousness or whether it's dealing with surreal dreams, it's always music of real expressive energy. It is some of the most pleasurable music you'll ever hear. Basically, you're gonna have a good time with John Adams.